show you how to analyze transactions into debit and credit parts. Again, we are using a sole proprietorship, so it'll be a little bit different than stock than a corporation where you have stockholders' equity. But I thought this would be just a real good example of how to analyze transactions into debit and credit parts. It says Vicki Lands owns a business called Landscape. Landscape uses the following accounts, and so here are all the accounts. Prepare T accounts, which they are all over here. Analyze each transaction into its debit and credit parts. Write a debit and credit amount in the proper T accounts to show how each transaction changes account balances. Write the day of the transaction in parentheses before each amount. So the first one on June 1, receive cash from owner as investment, $2,700. Receive cash means cash will increase. That is a debit because it's an asset account. Owner's investment will be the stockholder, the capital, and it will increase. And it is on the right side of the equation, so it will increase as a credit. We'll list the debit first. One. A debit of two thousand seven hundred and then capital a credit of two thousand seven hundred. On the second, paid cash for rent, five hundred dollars. Paid cash means our cash decreases. Decreasing cash is a credit, and rent takes away from our capital, our equity. But it, so it is the opposite of our capital, so it will be a debit. So let's do the cash first. It was on the second. Five hundred. And then we'll come down to rent expense. The second is five hundred. So we debited rent expense and credited capital or cash. Sorry, paid cash for supplies. The two accounts affected are cash and supplies. Paying cash, you're going to credit cash. Supplies increases, so we will debit supplies. They're both asset accounts. Forgot the date before. Three hundred and supplies. The next transaction, receive cash from sales. Cash is an asset account. You receive it, it's going to debit it because it's going to increase. Sales is a revenue account. It adds to our equity, so it will be increased on the credit side. And then sales is a credit. Pay cash for insurance. Cash and insurance are both asset accounts. Cash decreases, so it will be a credit. Insurance increases, so it will be a debit. And it is on the fifth. Next transaction, sold services on account to Alston Goff, $700. That is going to be accounts receivable. We will receive that money in the future. I always try and think of receivable as like when we receive cash. Receivable is going to be an asset. It will be a debit. And then sales is a credit. Services is sales. And it increases on the credit side because it's on the credit, the left side of the equation. Find what date is it? The eighth.
bought supplies on account from Bethany Supplies. Our supplies is an asset account. Bethany Supplies is an accounts payable because it says on account. Payable again is we're going to have to pay later. So that is going to be a credit on the <coughs> accounts payable. Supplies will be a debit because we increase what we have in supplies. And accounts payable will be a credit because we also increase what we owe. Paid cash for repairs, $75. Cash and repairs expense are the accounts we're going to use. Paid cash, we're going to decrease our cash, so we'll credit cash. Repairs expense is going to be a debit because it's going to increase what we have paid on our expenses. Forgot to date the 10th. I think I'm going to stop there. I, I hope that this has given you a good example of how to make transactions doing debits and credits in T-accounts.